Good morning and Merry Christmas. You know, we never know what's going to happen in a day, do we? A uh, little accident out there. One car flipped. She seems to be okay. The other gentleman whom she hit also okay. Squad's out there. So say a silent prayer for both of them, if you would. But we are going to get started with our service this morning. I appreciate all of your patience. Uh, we're going to start by singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. So if you'll stand, there we go. Screen, it's on 103, or the words will be on the screen. Man. Sunday school on a regular basis, 
We'll start a new Sunday school class on the 8th of January. Uh, it's titled Experiencing uh, Jesus and Experiencing His Touch. It's a study of the first chapters of Mark 1 through 6. So you're invited to come to that if you have nothing else. So uh, I assume there is no other announcements. Good. If you look on the back, you'll see some prayer needs. If you've got an update or something, I heard Tom Fuller was in the hospital, but is home now doing okay we we'll remember him anybody else have a, an update or something you'd like to add as far as prayer needs let's just pray for them pray for the accident right out did you get her name uh sandy and i can't remember the last name well lord knows the address yes first name sandy sandy uh is the one who really got look i didn't see where she was hurt in any way and i uh, think she she'll go above ankle but other than yeah, her car is upside down. So that will shake us all up. So remember Sandy uh, during this time. If there's nothing else, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we'll have our advent right now. Gracious Father of love, as we come before you this morning, we just want to lift up Sandy and anyone else that's on this prayer list, placing them in your hands. We know, Father, there are those on our list especially that they're not feeling well, they're sick, and then there are those, well, they're in a little bit more desperate type situation. They need your touch and they need your feel. And Father, we're gathered here today to celebrate you. It, it may be our choir cantata, but it's always to be a celebration about you. And Father God, we thank you because Christmas isn't about the tree or, or the decorations or the presents. It's about Jesus, who came to earth to die for us, to pay our sin debt, so we could gather to worship you, so we could talk with you, so we could one day be in heaven with you. And Lord, as we celebrate this morning, may that be on our focus. It's not what we can do or what we have done or anybody else. It's celebrating what you did for us. You sent your only son to die for us. If we believe. We pray all this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. of Advent and it's about love. The fourth candle reminds us of God's love and humanity for humanity. We can love one another with a pure heart because we have been born again through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Well you have been born again not of seed which is perishable but imperishable that is, through the living and enduring word of God. Father, well, we thank you for the love that you have given us by sending your son to earth to, be a, to live among us, Lord. We thank you that he died on the cross to save us from our sins, and all we have to do is to believe and trust in him. Amen.
Good news that came to earth when an angel told a girl named Mary, Don't be afraid. God has shown you his grace. You will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. Joseph learned that Mary was pregnant. He could have denounced her publicly or even had her stoned. But an angel brought him good news in a dream. Don't be afraid. The child Mary is carrying is from the Holy Spirit. Call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Next came news that meant Mary and Joseph would need to travel to Bethlehem to be taxed. One night in that small town, crowded with other travelers, Joseph searched for a place for Mary to give birth. And the news came to a crowded inn and an unsuspecting innkeeper. <laughs> ¶¶ 
great joy for all people. Today, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The sky blazed with the light of an angel host as they proclaimed, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace on whom his favor rests.
its wonder because you see the news that came from heaven that night in the form of a newborn baby is still wonderful news for us today a savior has been born we are not left without a way to be redeemed from our sins hope has come <clears throat>
Scripture says that the miracle that took place in Bethlehem had been in the mind and heart of God from the foundation of the world. He knew every moment of the way he would rescue and reconcile us to himself. As the plan unfolded, it was love, grace, and glory that made the night unforgettable.
of the birth of Jesus is for everyone. It isn't a relic of the past. It isn't just for a certain nation or creed or social status. We're all invited into it. We're asked to respond to the words of the angel. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy.
2, 17 through 20, says that when the shepherds had seen Jesus, they glorified and praised God. They spread the word, and all who heard it were amazed. After 2,000 years, it's still the same. When we hear the good news and our lives are changed by it, we go out to tell others. We carry it with us wherever we go. Salvation has come, and now heaven isn't just a place far away. Because of Christmas, heaven is destined to be home for us one day, and that is news that we love to share.
them know how much you appreciate it. And you will. So, before we close, I've got some good news and some bad news. And I'm going to start with the bad news. I'm going to step up here. Um, this is Teresa Wagner's last year directing and playing. For some reason, she thinks she needs to retire. <laughs> Come here. I know that y'all got something for a little gift to say thank you. You've done a great job. Oh, uh, honey. How are you going to do making through next week? Because I know what's coming. They don't. Well, we do want to thank you for this and for all your many years. And uh, you're not leaving us. You're just going to hang out somewhere else every now and then. Everybody plays piano and watch them play the part. <laughs> we have a position open. We'll even pay you. <laughs> and a great choir to work with. The good news is next Sunday is Christmas. And we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. I told a person a long time ago when he asked me, why do you celebrate his birth? I said, because he had to be born so he could die to pay for my sins. Now, I don't know. I, I don't know what any of you believe in your heart. I have suspicion about a lot of you. But if you don't believe in Jesus, your future is not good. But if you do believe in Jesus, and it's never too late to place your faith in him, I'll be more than happy to talk with anybody who wants to. But you've done that. You believe in him. One day, you're going to go to him. You'll be in his presence. You'll be in the kingdom of heaven. There'll be no pain, sorrow, no tears. Except tears of joy. In the world we live in today, it causes a lot of pain, a lot of tears. But the good news is, Jesus paid our debt. So we don't have to be separated from God. That's what it's all about. I have a sermon planned for next week, and if you don't have a church home, I invite you to come back anytime and every Sunday. And I've been thinking about what I'm going to do next week, and I'm thinking I may have to change it up. 
Because I'm thinking about the shepherds. I don't know if you realize it or not, but after they saw baby Jesus, they didn't leave Bethlehem quietly. They were witnessing, essentially, to everybody they could that the Christ, the Messiah, had been born. As you leave here today, I hope that's what you do. You don't have to go out like the shepherds and shout it, but tell everybody the Messiah, the Christ, has been born. That's the good news, and that's the reason we celebrate Christmas. Will you bow with me, and we'll close in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you, O oh Lord, that you loved us so much you sent your only begotten Son who was born in a stable, laid in a manger, shepherds saw him, wise men saw him, and he grew up into a man. Some called him a miracle worker. Some called him a prophet. I call him my savior. Because though he never ever disobeyed you, he went to the cross without sin. He shed his blood so he could be buried and raised in that grave and pay for my sins. He had to be born so he could die. He had to be born so I could be forgiven. Lord, you know, the, you know the hearts of everyone in this room. If there's one that's heart is not right with you, then may you lay it upon their heart to get right. I'll talk to them, or they can seek somebody out to find out how to place their faith in Christ. As we call in our church language, how to be saved. Because, Lord, I know you want everybody to be in heaven with you one day. And that day's getting closer and closer. And so, Father, we thank you for a choir. We thank you for this building, this place that we call a church. And we thank you most of all for your son. It's in his name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you all and Merry Christmas. And I hope you're fine. We all pull the